What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for some WTF. Let's get them. All right, this week we have a guest who honestly should be a pretty regular guest on our program, but it's been a while since we've had him on. So we're excited to welcome back Dr. Eric Berg. Yay! Let's see what he has to say today about bread. Warning, you may never eat bread again after Ooh, watching this video. I'm out. After watching this video. Now I do know that even at hinting at this idea of taking away someone's bread can stir up a lot of upset, emotion, resistance, etc. But I just want to challenge you to watch this video because the question is, why do people love bread so much? I mean, uh, because it's awesome. What is it about the bread that is so special that people like so much? Well, you're about to find out that there is a huge push to get everyone on this planet to eat more grains. The problem is we're, we're already having an appeal to conspiracy. This is something that is pervasive throughout any different diet zealotry. It's always they. There is the Illuminati who wants you to eat more of whatever it is. And vegans make this argument with animal products and low carbers make this argument with grains. Both are equally silly. We're already eating too many grains. There's a new term I want to introduce to you called health washing. Health washing is a term to describe um, giving certain claims to foods that are not necessarily true. I mean, everywhere you look, the grains are Who would do natural. that? They're wholesome. Not Dr. Berg, he wouldn't do that. Whole grains are a part of a healthy diet. I mean, they're high in fiber, which they actually are not as high in fiber as other foods. They're loaded in vitamins and minerals, and we won't talk about the anti-nutrient called phytase that blocks those minerals. And grains are heart- Okay, so the, <laughs> this is the common thing with low carb. They got phytates in them. If you do any kind of cooking, it basically like negates the phytates. You don't even have to worry about it. And even as such, who really cares? It's a small amount, it has a very small impact. But I digress. Are healthy and they can even help you lower your, your belly fat. But the problem is that most of these studies are surveys, they're questionnaires. Surveys show they're nine times out of 10 when somebody mentions belly fat, trials. they're completely full of it. And if they are, they're industry sponsored studies. The so the industry sponsored studies that he doesn't like, he points out how, you know, it's all big conspiracy, but Never mind the industry sponsored, you know, meat studies that he does like. You know, we won't talk about those. This is like, um, and it's, it's not just him that's guilty of this. This is all nutrition zealots. They cherry pick and then they inflate the problematic industry sponsoring for the industry they don't like while completely omitting the industry that is backing the studies that they do like. Is that when we're continually told to consume six to 11 servings of grains as our foundation for our diet, one half of them being whole grains, the other can be refined grains. That's a tremendous amount of carbohydrates that are introduced to our diet. But today I'm gonna to talk about just one little tiny aspect of bread. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about how it turns into sugar and it can cause weight gain. I wanna focus just on this. Every carbohydrate turns into sugar in the body. This is a silly argument. This one little thing called gluten, okay? now. What is gluten? Gluten is the protein in a lot of grains, okay, especially wheat. And gluten is a term to describe um, various proteins within this category. And one of the proteins is called gliadin-derived opioid peptide. Okay, now what the heck is that? That is a protein that can create an opioid effect. So in other words, it can mimic morphine to a certain degree. Now, what are the effects of... Uh, dosage makes the poison. Yeah, you know, I don't see people with like large wounds like, oh, give, give, give him some bread. Give him like a loaf of bread, stat. Oh, thank God. I'm not in pain anymore. I just don't see people like mainlining bread. Oh man, have, haven't had my fix in like three minutes. I, I can't see people out, out in the street turning tricks for loaves of bread. <laughs> opioids. Well, right now we have a major problem around the a world dosage with makes opioid the addiction, the synthetic opioids. Where it so this is a, a non-equivalence argument. Basically, he's like, they have these things that are like opioids. Therefore, they are opioids. Therefore, opioid pandemic. 
therefore death. No, these things are not equivalent, not even close. Dosage makes the poison. Look it up. If you've had a basic toxicology class, you'd understand. Dr. Berg probably hasn't because I don't think it's part of chiropractic curriculum, but if he wants to show me his CV, I'm, I'm welcome to apologize if I'm wrong. But if he has had basic toxicology, I don't think he paid much attention. Like fentanyl destroys people's lives. It's highly addictive. So just one thing. There it in was. Opioid just equated bread with fentanyl. It'll increase endorphins. Okay, endorphins are internal body chemicals that make us feel good, that can help decrease pain. Okay, and our bodies make endorphins. There's another term I want to introduce to you called exorphins. Okay, an exorphin is an endorphin that can be triggered by food. Okay, you consume certain things and it creates an endorphin effect. Now, this is very important to know because this is why you like bread painful. so much. Bread stimulates endorphins. It gives you this. Couldn't possibly be because it tastes good and you can put different things on it and it tastes good. Can't, can't people just like things? Is that possible? You claim that this low carb diet is so great, but like based on what you're saying, if you like something, it's bad. So you must not like your low carb diet. Like they, these arguments don't stack up. This euphoric feeling, it can stimulate appetite. That's why they serve you the bread before your meal. So you'll be hungrier and want to order more food. And so the reason why people love this bread is because it's altering our chemistry. It's increasing our endorphins. Okay. Now the problem is that it comes with a little bit of a package. You may have heard the celiac disease, which a person has a severe reaction to gluten, okay, in the GI tract, they're gonna get the classic symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, and abdominal pain, okay? And a lot of other conditions too, like inflammation in the gut, eventual atrophy of the little villi or the little um, internal roots on your, in your small intestine that are supposed to help you absorb food. Those become smaller and smaller to the point where they're just no longer there. So you have a major digestive problem. Yeah. That's a disease called celiac sprue. Most people don't have that. This is like saying everyone needs to avoid dairy because there are some people who are lactose intolerant. It's really a silly argument, but I digress. And the problem with celiac is it's very hard to diagnose unless you do a biopsy. And so you may say, well, I'm, I don't have celiac. Um, I don't get diarrhea, bloating, abdominal don't. pain when I consume bread. So what's the big deal? Well. <laughs> there's something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. It is very debatable whether or not that exists. In fact, there's some research that suggests it doesn't exist whatsoever. So he's stating this like this is a proven fact. It is not, and very little evidence to support what he's saying. And this is basically asymptomatic celiac. In other words, a person will have celiac without the symptoms of the digestive tract at least without classical symptoms, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain. But they have other issues, okay? Because the problem is still occurring at your gut level. The damage is still being done uh, on these villi. So everything that's about to come next has very atrophy, little or no research that will to eventually support show up it, just letting you know. In other problems down huh. the road. Muscle but atrophy, yeah, no, there's no evidence of that. Nothing, none. There is no evidence showing that you eat bread and, and you're more likely to have muscle atrophy. That is a fallacy. You may not experience really any symptoms when you have bread. But what I want to do is I want to expand your awareness on some other symptoms that you may be experiencing that you might not think are connected. Let's first talk about the mental connection, how it can affect uh, your mental state. Well, first of all, it can create symptoms like ADD, depression, no. anxiety, no and even autism, and I will put that research oh my down God. below. So that's actually super offensive as a father of an autistic child. Um, there's no evidence that bread causes autism. That is a complete joke, offensive, and uh, you, sir, are... I'm trying to be nicer, honey, what do I say? To somebody who says bread causes autism. I'm trying to be a little bit nicer, um, so I can't say what I really wanna say right now, but suffice it to say that that is not a position held by uh, autism experts. Uh, it is not shown in research. And you are creating fear, misinformation, 
And you're also basically blaming parents who fed their kids bread. So um, I can tell you that my son did not like bread. In fact, he only liked bread after he got diagnosed with autism. So how does that work? It was like retroactive? That's actually super offensive. Hello. It can even lead to things like schizophrenia, which no, I will it can't. put that study down below as well. The other problem is a permeability issue in your gut. So you've heard of leaky gut, right? Well, that is a condition Another where you thing have that holes has not in your actually gut. Really been shown it's in created research. by the inflammation because there's so much omega-6 fatty acids <laughs> in bread and grains. Like if we were going to compare... There's so much omega-6 fatty acids in bread and grains. First off, it's very debatable whether or not omega-6s are in inflammatory. In fact, most research shows omega-6s are not inflammatory, and it depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're talking about overeating from omega-6 oils, then yeah, it could be inflammatory. So can virtually anything. But how much fat does bread have in it? Bread usually has less than one gram of fat per serving. So you're saying that there's all this omega-6 when it has less than one gram of fat per serving? Like, this is an absolute joke. Compare omega-3 to omega-6, it's like one to 22. So in other words, there's 22 times more omega-6 fatty acids than there is omega-3. So there's a lot of inflammation going on, which is going to create holes or permeability. No, no, no. There's no evidence to support what he's saying, once again. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. This is another example of him misrepresenting the research. It, the research doesn't suggest that omega-6 is inflammatory. What it suggests is omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. This idea that, oh, these omega-6s are causing all these problems and causing you to have leaky gut. It's just, first off, there's not that much omega-6 in bread. You get far more omega-6 out of meat. He's not talking about meat doing this to you. I wonder, wonder why that, oh, because he likes low carb, that's why. Ability issues in your lower gut. And when you have holes, you allow proteins to go through and you create all sorts of immune reactions. And then you create allergies and eventually autoimmune problems, especially of the thyroid, like in Hashi. So basically bread is the cause of like everything from depression, autism, schizophrenia, to autoimmune diseases. An easy way to tell if somebody is full of it is if there is something that is the cause of or solution to all your problems. Hashimoto's. And then another one is psoriasis, okay? Which is an oh autoimmune God. condition. So we get damage to our intestine, and then we start getting malabsorption. We no longer absorb certain things. And that leads to vitamin and mineral deficiencies and a whole cascade of additional problems, which I'm not going to get into. Well, hold up, hold up. Wasn't he saying bread led to weight gain? If it caused intestinal atrophy and atrophy and malabsorption, that would actually cause weight loss. You know what happens to people who have inflammatory gut disorders? They have wasting. They don't, they don't gain weight. They lose weight. So again, he's trying to tie this to all your problems, when in fact, for some people, bread or gluten may be a problem. But the idea that this is the cause of all the problems is just a complete fallacy. The is insomnia, which leads to fatigue. You may have brain fog. Oh, insomnia You may now. also become anemic because you can't absorb iron. And it can lead to digestive problems like GERD, which is a severe acid reflux, and headaches, and migraines, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, sometimes uh, when people live in America, they consume like a pizza, for example, and they feel very bloated, but then that bloating goes away. And maybe they go on a trip uh, overseas. Uh, maybe they go to Italy and they eat a pizza, but they don't react. And they're wondering, why can I eat grains in certain countries, but I cannot consume them in other countries like America? Well, one of the reasons is that when you ferment grains into bread or pizza dough or whatever, the fermentation, the microbes actually eat the protein. They start reducing the gluten considerably. So for example, sourdough bread has a lot less gluten as other breads. And this is why they might not experience the bloating. And so in America, the way they make bread is they don't ferment it for two or three days. They oh my God. Uh, yeah, we're gonna stop this just cause I, I can't honestly take any more. Um, yes, that is true about sourdough bread. It is true that it has, the, about the process and everything, who cares? If you are somebody who has celiac, you're not eating sourdough bread either. You, you, this is a non-issue for 95% of the population, if not more. Again, 
He is taking a medical condition and then he is trying to convince us all that this translates to all of us. And that is not true. I'm gonna put some meta-analyses down below about cardiometabolic risk factors and various other health markers demonstrating that when you give increased whole grains that you have better alpha outcomes, not worse. You can do all this circular logic that you want, Dr. Berg, but at the end of the day, if you're correct, if we feed people bread, we should see increased incidence of these problems. We do not see that. We actually see the opposite in many cases. So you're full of it. You're just trying to push your narrative as per usual, and that's fine, but I ain't buying it. And I'm hoping nobody else buys it either. Now guys, I know it can be hard to dismantle all these claims on social media. People tell me all the time, Lane, I don't know what to believe. One person says this, one person says that, and they always have studies to back it up. That's why we created REPS, which is Research Explained in Practical Summaries. It's our new monthly research review at BioLane. And for just $12.99 per month, you get access to REPS, which is going to break down five studies that relate to nutrition and training every month, summarize them, tell you what they tested, how they tested it, and what they found, and how it applies to you and your training and nutrition. But we do it without a bunch of scientific jargon and in a way that anyone can understand and apply to themselves. So click the link in the description, sign up for reps. I think you're gonna love it, and I will catch you next week.